I like the Morphling as well, outside of the combo, just I think it lanes okay against Underlord. Um, obviously the damage reduction later can be an issue, but I think Navi's whole draft together looks a lot more clean and easy to execute than, than AS Monaco Gambit. Generals are already getting a good amount top anyway, so sure they're not killing the Ursa, but that lane's not going well. You know, it's Ursa's farming, but unlike CM and Witch Doctor, where you literally address the boar, Jakiro is not the same. He's very slow, so you see 230 movement speed when he's getting hit by these boars, and Soneko's just very dead here. Yeah, and they're gonna get the first blood onto Roger at the same time, just before oh. the first blood was claimed, they actually managed to kill Always Wanna Fly. So we still, we'll see the runes checked out. We'll spawn toward, down toward bottom. I believe it's a DD. Very nice if no one's able to get that. If, with the DD, they can actually set up for some kills. It looks like it's a race, though. Uh, Iceberg, he doesn't want to let him get a second power rune here, and he'll force the DD to be picked up now. Thanks to Always Want to Fly being here, they have a small chance to be able to win this fight, especially with the boat coming in. Immersion's going to be pulled back into it. Managed to time the spike hair base to turn that boat damage, but it's not enough to live. Is it enough for no one to be able to get this kill? Slow down, always want to fly, just doing everything he can. The smallest Icarus dive to get that movement speed slow onto no one. Now he's got to make sure that he can actually get out. He does die here, but ultimately he did save his mid from going down. Well worth it, I think. This is already a big concern as Navi with the better win condition in the later stages is really leading this early game already as Soneko, see you later. Yeah. Can't tell you, Fogged, how much I loathe Necrobook as an item right now. And uh, oh, you can so kind of see why. It does so much damage. They're able to... If they lose this mid-tower in the next next few minutes, there's going to be no space for Dream to farm this Battle Fury. Yeah, 100%. This is... Uh, it's also the best opportunity for them to be able to create some space for Dream is uh, if yep. they can get into these fights in mid and hold out, especially if they can get a kill out of it, it'd be even better. The boat's going to come in, but the can damage reduction, it's not going to be good enough. Iceberg nice. goes down, does do a little bit back to no one, but not worth talking about. So that is a really good start. Yep, thought to send one down there, but just keep this Underlord, keep the puck in the mid lane for the most part for these next few minutes. Just keep slowing down that push, keep slowing down General as well as Iceberg. And Iceberg, he has to be more careful how he steps up as, oh, always want to fly as well. Okay, gets off the Supernova. The Fisher is going to be able to get in front of Immersion and he will go down. Close. Yeah, uh, nice rebuttal there, but then a lot of damage, if anything. I might actually Gambit to take uh, the mid tower first if they can hold it off. Fence. Navi continuing to try and work heroes around the uh -oh. map. An opening found. Dream really oh, wasn't God. showing himself a whole lot. He was playing the jungle for the most part, but General still finds him. I'm so much stronger compared to the, uh, the Enigma that we saw him playing that same style with. Absolutely. It's, again, I mean, always they really want to just kill Always Want to Fly. This time they'll get him again. So that's the fourth death. Four out of five have been him. You fools. You're following right into Always Want to Die's trap card. But otherwise, he can just die. He yeah. still is very susceptible to that Firestorm damage as he's very high HP. Lots of nuke. So Iceberg has to be a little more cautious with his moves. Oh, that Vendetta. It breaks the smoke. Roger Whoa. knows they're around here somewhere. Actually throws out the Fisher right as he was about to get hit. He's still going to die here, but at least they turn around a good amount of damage. Afterlife, he's going to pop the emergency card here and see if they can actually get out, but no one gets popped. Afterlife, whoo, he gets pulled oh, yeah. right back by the X Iceberg. He was uh, not going to let him get away. And now Navi, they have a chance to just full on run at the mid tower and even the odds here. We just see V-Tune almost double. He's getting close to double the net worth of Ursa. Ursa wants to be playing way ahead of Morphling. This, this is going to be a looming demise that's going to hit pretty quickly, I feel like, at this 20-minute mark when Shaker gets this thing, too. As v -tune, maybe they can get him once. Silence. They don't have any follow-up. They're going to throw they out the don't. coil, but by now, he's going to be able to start up his strength morph. You can see him even, like, baiting them. He's like, go ahead. No, 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 I'm not strength morphing yet. You still have chance. Look at that. General comes in on the right-hand side. Does manage to catch him in the river here. Slowing down Afterlife with the Supernova, trying to keep him in range of the stun. Will manage to hit that one. The big tanky boy of Afterlife does fall. And that is another smoke that goes to waste here for AS Monaco Bank Gambit. 4K gold lead, but it's, it's starting to feel much more tremendous than that. Just yeah. with all these recent fights, there's just no hope for... for Right, so Monaco to really get any kills on this Morphling. They almost did, but now no one. He gets just completely destroyed. They even throw the Echo on him. Perfect synergy, perfect plays with the puck. 
just all his rotations go successful. But we've seen, you know, a couple of these rotations not go successful for no one. And he's, he still is doing decent as the puck. So if he had had a little more success in that early game, he'd be in a much better stop, uh, much better spot to actually slow down Morphling. Gambit. They tried to go for the trade off there. They were hitting the tier two tower. They probably knew Roshan was going on. That's a classic trade off. Unfortunately, they couldn't do the damage fast enough to take the tier two. TP's come in, and Sineko is going to be the victim of that rotation. Now, you can see AS Monaco Gambit are still trying to play like out on the map, but Navi are not really splitting up too much, and they know. They're around here. They're, just They're chasing down. They are going to be able to find both of them here as Immersion's going to be chased down by the Beastmaster. And no one. He's got an orb. He's got a phase shift. Might be able to jump away. He does manage to get a little bit farther with the Raining Rift, but they're going to spot him here in a second and chase him down with the Sunray. That is going to be it. No one burnt to a crisp. 7,000 net worth lead now for Na'Vi as uh, they continue just to make no mistakes. They're just forcing Na'Vi's movements at least a bit around so they can get some space. And part of that is, again, the, the Beastmaster factor, right? Is yep. like, They have to play so aggressively, because if they play on their own side of map, they're just going to get hunted down like this and lose even more map control. Nurse is not going to have any space to farm. Afterlife, he's certainly going to die here. They're still chasing up on Dream. Roger throws the Fisher the wrong direction there. Guess is wrong on the 50-50, and Dream will get out. Yeah, they still have some time on their Aegis, so they're looking to force this fight. Book is going to be down for about 10 more seconds. And the Hawk, oh god, it's scouting. It sees both supports. They're claiming the high ground, looking for a wraparound as well with the Kunkka. Fisher goes out, lead off on the Nyx Assassin, not letting him get a chance to get off the Spike Carapace. But they also want the extra kill in Sineko, so the cores are saying, you guys got the Nyx Assassin, right? I'm going to go ahead, run down Sineko here, run down the Captain of AS Monaco Gambit. And uh, did they get both? They did get both. Right. They will. Finally cleans them up with the Fisher. Power of Hawk when you're ahead. You know, as we just got saw displayed by, you know, Southeast Asia mostly. Earthshaker, Morphling. In the past, ridiculous. Now, even more ridiculous somehow with the shard. Yeah. They really got to take that shard out. Is uh, no one is going to die here. You really got to make it so the shard is uh, the Fisher does not have Aftershock attached to it. Like yeah. The fact that you can just cast spells away from it. There's just so many different little things that make it a little a little bit too ridiculous. Dream. Now, there are three heroes here. They can kind of collapse on Na'Vi, but there is, of course, that outpost, which they're going to try and take here. The Beastmaster's already rotated in. He's going to TP on in. See if they can finish off Always Want to Fly. They can't. Supernova's going to go down. They go for the uh, attempt at an Uber out, but uh, that's going to be denied by X marks the spot. So, yeah, instead of a, a sandwich, they end up uh, getting obliterated. The Aftershock thing just yet, but that's probably coming just next. Unless they just kill everybody on the side of ASM Monaco and ASM Monaco. GG's out right after this fight, which is also very likely. Yeah. All right. Well, he's got the... Uh, he's still got the Ear Shaker form, so he can still kind of run them down. If uh, anybody is spotted here, which they will, General's going to go ahead and spot them. They're going to try and blow up General as quick as he can, but a BKB from him. And, uh, okay, they're going to try and get out. They're going to leave Seneco behind. They don't even try and play near the cliff to grab him. <laughs> They just immediately run as far away to the left, away from uh, Na'Vi. Immersion is going to find a small opening here on Always Want to Fly, which he may actually survive through. The E-Blade shot goes out. Fisher is going to be stopped by Yule Scepter from uh, Immersion, but he's going to be pulled back to his doom. Now the Super oh, is going to go him. out. Dream. Wow, that one shot just took a quarter of his health. That's the Enchant Totem hit from V-Tune. They uh, probably they scared of the like, X plays all the time since like every Underlord Rift has just been X'd back. I think yeah. after it's like, please no. Yeah, well, Iceberg gets a little low, but they do take the melee barracks. <laughs> they're they're hunting for him though. Scans out General. He's got that Shadow Blade. That's why he bought it. Goes up on the high ground. Waits Easy. for a TP. Starts off with a Primal Roar. Now we've got <laughs> and he every X back. single time. Every single time, Fox, I get that that song, Jump Around. It goes in my oh, yeah. head whenever I see this Morphling or Shaker. And hey, guess what? He's getting uh, X, so he can go ahead and be right back here into this mid lane. Bada bing, bada boom. That's a godlike spree for B2. Good on AS Monaco Gambit for uh, playing it out. Yeah. <laughs> they, uh, I, I, like, again, I literally can't see a way for them to, like, win this game.
Eh, God bless them, they're, they're here and they're playing Dota and they're uh, hoping Na'Vi will throw. But Na'Vi been slow, methodical, and very controlled in their play. Which they, ha which Na'Vi has done a lot of the games that I've gotten to see with them. We've had like, I think two games where Na'Vi wasn't as disciplined as normal. And as we say, see you later to Immersion quickly. A one shot coming up from the Morphling. Look how much gold V-Tune gets for that too. 417 when they're 24k ahead on a solo. Solo kills just, I don't know. There's some weird stuff with solo kills with the way gold goes, but. Again, the hunt continues. Hunt. This time it's going to be the bear that gets poached. And yeah, you're right. Big testament to ASM Monaco Gambit for staying in the game because this is just, this is starting to get pretty brutal. Let's look at this. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> that actually looks so cool. He's doing a ballerina, little pirouettes through the air as uh, he starts dunking on fools. Iceberg goes ahead and shows off that he can get solo kills as well. Hello, V Tune. Good by everybody pretty much on the side of AS Monaco Gambit as they go ahead and call the GG. Yeah, yeah. Brutal. Brutal. Absolutely brutal. Navi showing that there is potentially a big difference with top two and the rest of the field. Europe division. Yeah, I, I, I feel like I always see Navi get themselves a draft that they're super comfortable with. Purge, final words, are we gonna see game three? No, no, it's over. GG. Oh, everyone okay. go home. All right, going to a break. <laughs> More adverts, right. please. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see uh, how how he functions as this mid morphling. As uh, no one does have a career of playing that a decent amount, but uh, surprisingly, he actually doesn't have that positive of win rate with it. He's actually 22 games, 50% uh, exactly. So, uh, okay. Considering the fact that obviously no one has a much larger than 50% win rate on most of his heroes, uh, considering his success on Virtus Pro. Nice first blood there for General as he comes across. Oh, the courier too. He gets the courier. All righty oh my then. God. Always want to fly, just baited the hell out of Seneca with a fairy fire. He really thought he had him. Gets played. At least they did pull the Beastmast out of the lane, so we're seeing Ray King farming really well. So that's one fortunate thing that we are seeing for from Gambit. Nope. Look, another one. Get that Rubik kill anyway. Speeding mangoes, and we're seeing that slow coming in. You can't. There's no open wounds. That constant slow is very annoying for a tide hunter. Yeah, especially when you added two more slows on top of it, yeah. both the ghost and the uh, the vool there. Applying its poison, waveform over, keeping the pressure up on Iceberg, seeing if they could do as much damage as possible to the tier one tower. Meanwhile, bottom lane is a mess of skeletons and boars and Necronomicon minions. So. It's a uh, full-on zoo out here, and it's a oh, zoo that apparently okay. Dream is the zoo keeper of. Getting another kill in this lane, and it's now level six. So they have to play aggressive with it right away if he does summon his books from now on. Seeing no, no one, one. the first move out of the mid lane. All right, this is going to be a quite the combo here. They're going to have to Ravage into the arrow. It does land very nice. AS Monaco Gambit score big kill, and no one's rotation is not only going to help them get the carry kill on V2, but also take this tower. Oh my goodness, look at all these that stacks. That is a large, large stacks here. That Who's makes it even more though? concerning, though. If they take this tier one tower and they start, you know, invading into the jungle a little bit, if Tide finds those yeah. stacks, then that's going to be disastrous oh. for Na'Vi. Well, only a 2,000 net worth lead, thanks in part to all these stacks that Roger has been doing. So Iceberg has made a, a really big comeback. Uh, is his net worth is about even oh. with the Morphling. TP down to the bottom lane with a stolen arrow. Always want to fly. He's going to try and TP out, but an arrow in turn from Immersion is going to put a stop to that. And now, oh my goodness, General. General, what the? He's deep. Yeah, what was he doing here? This was some wild attempt to be able to catch somebody around the tier two. I'm not sure if he was expecting like a morphling kill when he's like full agility underneath tier two tower or what that was, but either way, they both die. Like their team fight on Navi, it's strong if they get the doom on the tide, but if they don't get the doom on the tide, the team fight is just gonna be a disaster. And Afterlife, he knows yeah. this. He's positioning himself far on the left side. General. He's going to come to the side. They've got the vision of Afterlife here, so they can kind of see a way to fight, but they can't really uh, pull the trigger on it, apparently. They're just going to have to give up the Aegis to no one. Na'Vi, very happy to be able to take this tower, but they won't be happy if they lose out on the outpost experience at 20 minutes as a result of giving up that Tier 2. So they definitely got to generate some sort of game plan for the uh, next three minutes. Guess the game plan is going to be Iceberg run at the outpost to zone them away with his BKB. 
as Roger, he's found here by no one. And the roar does go off up on the north, it looks like a conversion. While Roger does get chased out, he will bait the hand of God. Okay, so he'll use hand of God. Iceberg will get Seneko, two supports down for one. Not terrible, but they can't keep fighting because of the BKB that is down, plus the Aegis that is up. And no one turning into the Rubik, get him and toss back there. Telekinesis is enough for Afterlife to arrive. So they actually train two for two for supports, and they can take that outpost back if they want. Taking the outpost back, Sineko, though, immediately charging up here. They're going to pop the Moonlight Shadow, just seeing if they can slow down pretty much anybody or anything, I guess. I'll General is going to be caught by Dream. Shows himself. Casual 657 damage. Crit. Or he's soft. <laughs> Good old M. Claw. Uh, oh, or sorry, that's Life Stealers. As uh, two lanes of barracks is going to be pretty hard to fight back from. That's why Na'Vi, this is a Roshan they must contest. Can they get the Doom on the Tide is the question. Or which target does Iceberg go for? Smoke in. Ravage up. Already go to the Morph Link. The Aegis is going to be picked up. The Prime Roar actually knocks Dream outside of the, of the engagement there. So they've just completely taken out the Morph Link out of this. Now they're going to try and slow people down with no buyback on to no one. It's possible that Na'Vi can continue this fight. they got to be careful, though, of that Ravage. After like turns around. Two-man Ravage catches two more on the outside. A four-man there with the Star Storm coming in. Looking to try and finish up Iceberg. Because he does manage to grab the cheese. Eat that immediately an arrow pops over onto dream slowing him down but now it's navi who have to uh, try and escape away from gambit's wrath dream on the front lines just chopping fools down he brings two cores and a third and v-tune is going to start getting away v-tune's actually going to pop back in here see if he can get a fast kill onto emerging pops the rage gets one drops the gem doesn't manage to pick it up he had a tp immediately a smart little play meanwhile afterlife went by oh, the shelf okay Nice How arrow. How they get afterlife? From, uh, yeah, I guess. Always want to fly catching that one. It just feels like they can only kill the target. They can only kill a couple targets, depending on the doom target. But these two other cores, they're just they're always a problem. It's, it's only one of the cores that you're going to be able to take out with that big Doom. The other two, just you don't have the damage to deal with They're going to go again. They managed to get the... Uh, oh, this time he managed to get off the, the more strength. So it's going to be a hard, hard kill here. But fortunately, the Life Stealer is very adept at being able to bring down these big tanky targets as he sticks on top of them. But V-Tune, he went in. Now he's got to get out, but he doesn't have an Infest. The Primal Roar goes down. V-Tune running for his life to the right-hand side. Arrow isn't going to land, but he doesn't manage to stay alive. Just a little bit too much. They kill some of the backline heroes. Sineko is going to be the first one to fall here. Ice moving up to the left-hand side, hoping to be able to dodge and get his blink off of the Radiance. It's sticking to him. They're not going to let him get away. Not with the gem that was dropped on the ground. They picked that one up, and Dream will continue to take this they call by it. himself, apparently. They uh, say, yeah, they can deal with the Morphling, as you pointed out, Boggs, multiple times, but there's multiple threats on the board. Yeah, good and great early game, honestly. That was the biggest thing. I think bottom for Navi went way too chaotic. Rubik and the Beastmaster just giving up a insane amount of gold really to Dream and just enable him to get what? This insanely fast armlet, a very fast radiance, and then there's too many threats. I think, I think Navi this time. Uh, their lanes are just so strong. Off lane Puck into PL Disruptor. Uh, good luck. They have other heroes to control. They have other heroes to actually allow him to cast the Doom. They have Earthshaker to set up with a Fissure because last game I just saw Iceberg trying to set up the Doom and he can't, and they have always want to fly and Disruptor. Urshi just class. rolling up fearless here, but uh, quickly rolls away. Oh, he didn't make it. Roger stops him with the fissure. They're going to cut what around the play. trees, and he's not going to be able to roll away. Well done. And they're going to try and give it up to somebody specifically, and it's Iceberg. They give it to their mid. Get him any type of advantage versus a Morphling so he can do a little bit better. Sineko may still be able to hold the creep wave in front of the tower. We'll see. Now, the pressure from General is a bit too much. Roger grabs the creep wave oh, again. Roger. This time, though, Roger he might put himself in trouble. He already used his Fisher earlier. He slowed down enough. They, yeah, they, they saw that immediately. Dream and Sineko were like, that is a kill. And they tip Roger before he even goes down. Now General's going to die as a result of that misplay from Roger. Two kills to AS Monaco Gambit. Man, oh, I, that was a right. massive misplay. I, they, they had just like kind of even the lane on. Roger just walks up and literally just dies. Yeah, but the, that means the, you know this greed is paying off. It's a PA morphling lineup, and your PA is able to get this farm, so it's it's looking pretty nice. It just also when you're seeing Iceberg really pull out ahead this time around versus that morphling. Um, certainly is. Put 
General. This General dies again here in this bottom lane. Like, I don't know how General is going to find himself to catch back up. They're going to have to have some big moves across the lanes to be able to allow this Beastmaster to have a game as the surround is coming from Gambit onto mid lane. Yeah, and if they could get this kill, it would be massive. Iceberg no longer having uh, much regen left. So he just has a fairy fire. Is that going to be enough? No, it's not. The coil and the impetus shot from Snakeo makes sure that he does die. Five to two now with uh, AS Monaco Gambit. Man, poor General. Still level four. His boar is just not that scary. Roger. They're trying to bail him out. Yeah, they Iceberg. rotated mid. He smoked up Iceberg so they can go ahead and get a good Doom rotation in. They're going to spot Dream. Oh, bit of a misclick there, but Dream, there's no way out of this one, really. So uh, he's going to go down. Small chance that he gets denied, perhaps, but unlikely. The kicks are going to come in, trying to slow him down as best as possible. A V2 keeps up. Immersion quickly rolls out of the way before Roger could catch up to him. But PA is going to get doomed in pretty much all these scenarios. So I'm just still going to be watching up for that. And, you know, it's, it's going to be this, like, these these two carries that are able to carry the game for Gambit. And they are having a pretty decent start. But is it going to be enough to deal with the PL? As we do see Vtune, he's oh. getting a little out of control pre-diffusal. Yeah, he tried to chase down the Enchantress there, which uh, is really, you know, I'm looking at this. They really don't have good ways to kill this Enchantress. Especially with uh, Medallion already. A nice roll-in kick from Immersion. Helps secure the kill for no one. Very nicely here and distributing their wealth. As Zaneko pushes up a bit far, but he's just fine. He's got that untouchable now. What is it that is, that is allowing AS Monaco? Oh, roll-in from Immersion right as Roger tries to go up to the high ground. They had a plan for him. What do you think it is that is uh, allowing AS Monaco? Oh, that was oh, a whip whoa. and a half afterlife. Guess didn't expect to always want to fly to keep moving forward in that situation. And uh, misses the coil. Still gets the kill, though. So then it's right. And then Iceberg, it should be an easier job for him because then his main priority should just be always doom the PA. Gambit. They're going to strike right back here at this top lane, rolling into. Poor old General, man. He has just not been having a great game three. No, he's not. Yeah, even worse that they try and rotate over now, but it's too late. So it's not even like they got a whole lot of farm out of it. I mean, General is no. hovering around the area. There's the heart. So V-Tune. He's extremely ready to fight, and we'll have to see how it all kicks up, how they actually deal with these illusions. Got to be eyes on the PA to do so, as he's gone for a greedy build on the PA. General just General cannot again. go anywhere and can't seem to do a whole lot. Afterlife wants a bigger target. They ignore, always want to fly in favor of Roger here. And with the coil on silence, they should be able to kill him pretty easily. Double kill for Dream. Easy ways into the back line. It's been this incredibly passive play from Navi. I feel like you have to look for some opportunities. You're not roaring, you're not static summoning, you're not dooming, you're not echo slamming. You're letting Gambit dictate the pace completely, and they just keep finding Sineko. Yeah, much like uh, when Always Wanna Fly was constantly being the one being found from all these smoke ganks. Both these fine positions of Gambit and Navi are doing a good job of positioning themselves between where the enemy could be and where their team is, making sure that uh, potential smokes always break on them first. They do have a lot of information on Navi. They're just not being able to capitalize on it too well. Yeah, you really like them to at least finish off this mid tower. But uh, they're no trying. One. 15 seconds on the Aegis. So it's getting uh, about that time where Navi can perhaps be a little bit more confident with the glimpse back. No one. Five more seconds. They're waiting oh, they're and waiting them. and waiting. Three more, holding off a little bit longer. Two, one, Aegis expires, and now they just let loose. And no one, he's certainly going to be dying under this onslaught. But Dream, he pumps out a little power of his own. He quickly kills General, now tries to bounce back. V-Tune charging backwards here, trying to use that Phantom Rush to be able to get as far away from Gambit as they are. A tsunami rushing forward. They're going to take over Iceberg, melt him down real quick. Afterlife, with the buyback coming out from Always Wanna Fly, he's going to be caught inside the Static Storm. They kill him. 
him, Sineko. He's got to be careful, but fortunately, the untouchable will do a lot for him there. No one. He's almost burned out of mana here. He's got to be uh, a bit careful, especially if he gets glimpsed back. Nice. He turned oh, nice into the play. Phantom Lancer. Ultra kill. Rampage coming out for Dream as he has just taken out everybody in the back line. More bad bags are coming in. Dream, man fighting up against VTune. VTune does have another doppelganger up, and one more second. Immersion's been hunting him this entire time. Sounds goes out. They catch up a little bit longer. Sineko gives him an opening. Turn around. There goes the shock. Roger, is that enough? A little bit more. Dream is so low, but VTune, he got shotgun. He was ethereal, and he couldn't finish it off, but Dream does finally go down. They get the kill. VTune with his heart. He charges the other direction. He goes oh up the hill God. with the neutrals. The phantom rush. He gets to the other side. Now he doppelgangers again, and I feel like the that's region. it. They can't kill him anymore. If anything, they've got to get back. Iceberg's coming in with the Shiva. He'll be able to slow him down. No one's been burned out of mana. Bit by bit, they will take him down. Pick him apart. No one goes down. Afterlife potentially next year. The coil goes out. Ooh, snaps himself on that one. V-Tune, though. What a play. The heart doing some serious work keeping him alive in that team fight, Fog. See if he can backdoor this tier one tower, the top lane. He's got some allies behind him, too, so it should be pretty easy. What level was he before the fight, actually? I feel like he was only level... I think he had three levels from the fight on the PL, by the way. We'll glimpse the back glimpse. into the Static Storm. They managed to get Immersion this time around. He is most of the time been able to stay ahead of them, but this time between the Hawk and the Glimpse, they, uh, they do catch him before he can roll away. This Iceberg Doom has a Shiva. So it's not like he's squishy by any means. If they mess up at all killing him, they're just they're screwed in the fight. As Dream, he shows himself. Iceberg can't get the Doom, though. Yeah, Sineko may have that untouchable. The sad thing is for both him and uh, for no one, these are heroes that can survive relatively long time. Yeah, V2 level 20. So, I mean, yeah, he's getting he's getting quite a bit stronger. And Dream, he is getting stronger too, but it's Dream is playing versus Doom, which I'm just going to keep keep harping on. He's just going to get doomed, and then it's going to be the Morphling to deal with that PL, and it just it doesn't feel like he's oh. going to be able to. As Afterlife is found, the Hawk. Gets the vision. He's going to sell fuels for as long as he can now. He still has a chance to be able to get out of here, especially with the sounds going out. Afterlife is pulled back by the glimpse that he did still have the orb out. The Primal Roar from Long Range is going to be able to catch Immersion, but immediately doomed. BKB doomed up Dream. He jumps in and has to run. He's got to get out of here. Fortunately, the coil will slow down everything. They can reset this fight and perhaps even re-engage if they choose to. Afterlife certainly wants to, it's looking like, because he's going to play around a little bit with his orb. Jumps out, Dream quickly kills Roger on the side. A big crit. Dang, oh, my iceberg. He lost about half his health from that one, but Dream has just been caught up in this Phantom Lance. He's being burned out of all this mana. Once again, Glimpse, Glimpse back in, but no one comes in and finishes off General. They still can't do anything about Vtune, though. He does way too much damage, and he is just uh, this this giant wave of illusions that they, they can't touch. He's full health all the time. It is bit by bit burning him down. Now Level three Doom online know. now, too. He dropped a ward. That ward is spotted by the sentry. Both teams knew that the uh, the other was lined up here. And uh, a re-smoke here. They're going to go ahead and jump into the triangle. And don't tell me that Gambit are going to do something similar here. Is they're actually going to smoke up? They're going to smoke. They know. They know that this is the fight. Like, Navi knows that this is their biggest fight. If they win this fight, they just likely win the game completely as Sineko. He'll walk in first. Sineko. Coil only under one. Iceberg charges forward with his BKB and immediately identifies the, the PA. Doom. And here comes VTune as well. With a broken PA, he is very easy for them to be able to just go on and take apart. The Doom's not going to last much longer, but they've got the kill anyway. Jumping forward. Roger gets in front of Immersion. Again, getting a second kill for them. And everybody else from AS Monaco Gambit, it looks like, has already disengaged from and it feels like Gambit has to play like 4D chess in order to just somehow try to find a way to take these fights. They have to they have to do something though, because these next few fights, Dream just has to be able to protect himself somehow. Like someone has to buy a Lincolns or anything to protect this man. Yeah, it's looking like five on fives are not the play anymore for nope. Gambit. They've got to try and split people up. Oh no! Tried to jump in and finish off Roger. Roger gets off the Fisher. And now he's going to have to use the Waning Rift to escape here. Does have the... Oh, he jumped a little bit too soon, Afterlife. Okay, he's got a blink and a lot of charges. Sadly, though, he's got nothing left. Yeah, beyond godlike for V-Tune. Well... Sineko's hey, Sineko's even going. getting base damage. <laughs> look, at, look at this creep. Look at this Solar Crested plus yeah. 50 damage creep. Look at it. I don't think Navi's respecting this at all. Just look at this creep. It's tanking now. Look at this creep go. 18 armor. 
What's We're happening? Just taking the tower. My man just took a tier two and now potentially a tier three. They do get something for it. They uh, go ahead and spot immersion and get a glimpse back on him. So, hey. He's still going. Uh, He's got a like, range creep now. Yeah, the, I mean, the tier three's gone. <laughs> Guys. <laughs> All right, well, he'll pay with his life in a second here, as if they see him, he's dead. Do they see him, though? General? Oh, he could we'll beat out. He's going to go for now, but of course, the roar is going to be there, and so... He will slowly but surely die. Then at the same time, though... What is this? They actually tried to coil up. The Doom went out onto the Morphling. This gives Dream finally a free opportunity to get in there. Trying to go for the Deny. Afterlife misses out on that one. Dream cannot afford to die here. He's working his way up to that Divine Rapier. They're going for the all-in play, but they thought for a second they could have taken a small pick and brought down Iceberg, but they could not have been more wrong. Afterlife cutting the wave again, but they've got a double catapult wave pushing in. And I think they probably saw that relic also in the in the bags. Yeah, they did. They're going tier fours. They know. Yeah, uh, you're gonna have to buy back on no one. Somebody's gonna have to clear out this creep wave. Uh, I mean, the following creep wave has been cut. Yeah, too many nerfs to the doppelganger one. So it seem. Yeah, he doesn't feel like he's he's not even worried about survivability anyway in this game. So yeah, might as well. As the racks does go down. No one trying to find any type of farm. But now, double dooms are ready. Iceberg has a blink coming out and abyssal for V2. And they are more than ready to end this one. Yeah, they certainly are. No it one. looks like no one may be caught before. Yeah, he is. He's doomed. Blimps back with the doom. Immersion trying to roll forward. I'm not sure for what, though, as now he is certainly going to be dying here. They all, oh, that is an agonist after coil. Oh, they iceberg. might just be able to kill, but no, the abyssal blade. It stops the PA. Iceberg gets off the doom just in time at Dream. Oh, he came so close to being able to kill Iceberg and stop that big counter, but it didn't really matter. I think v -tune, he was just so damn big on that Phantom Lancer. Navi, they will walk away the victors of this series. They were the favorites probably coming in, but this is certainly one of their toughest opponents yet at the group stage. AS Monaco Gambit certainly pushed them to the limits.